Congressman John Lewis says he has no plans to step aside from his duties as he undergoes treatment for stage four pancreatic cancer. The longtime civil rights activist says his condition was detected earlier this month. He said to begin his treatment plan in the coming days. And though he may miss a few votes during that time, he says he plans to be, quote, back on the front line soon. And here to break down the condition is Dr. Jen Cottle, family physician and associate professor at Rowan University, also friend of the show. Dr. Cottle, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Happy so, holidays, guys. Happy, happy holidays. holidays. Yes. Tough news to hear, definitely. This is. What exactly do you think this diagnosis means? You know, pancreatic cancer is tough. I'm just going to go right out and say I tweeted it um, when I heard the news. I, first of all, it's it's devastating when anyone has pancreatic cancer, or any cancer for that matter. Let's just mm -hmm. be clear. But pancreatic cancer is a tough cancer. It really, really is. And some of the things that makes it tough is that, you know, by the way, the pancreas, some people don't know where that is. That's a little gland, almost like a small pear that sits behind the stomach and in front of the spine. The problem is that gland is hidden. And we often don't find the cancer until it's later on. Mm -hmm. And that can make it so tough. It's a tough cancer, but you know, once again, you know, I, as a family doctor, I like to be optimistic and realistic. Um, at the same time, I, I, I'm rooting for uh, the representative and, and we've got a lot of treatments available, so we're gonna hope. I'm glad you said that because in a statement, he said his doctors have told him that recent medical advances had made this type of cancer treatable in many cases. He said, quote, I have a fighting chance. What type of treatments are we talking about here, doctor? Right. So first of all, it depends on what stage the cancer is in and also the underlying conditions or sort of, um, you know, how good of health the person underlying is, right? That's going to typically determine um, what treatments are available and how effective they might be. But traditionally, we think of uh, treatments such as uh, surgery, okay, uh, chemo, uh, chemotherapy, and radiation. Um, there are some potential uh, other treatments uh, called immunotherapy and things like that that are not as commonly used but may be um, available for certain types of patients. You know, the idea is that, you know, we hope, and again, we don't know all the details. We don't know all the details about exactly, I think I read in the news that it was stage four, but we don't know exactly what that means for him, his underlying health, et cetera, et cetera. Once again, you know, I really believe in being positive. Uh, you know, even though this is a very, very tough condition, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very hopeful. Dr. Jen, I'm also glad that you broke down where exactly exactly in the body That's it is right. because we hear about it all the time yeah. but we don't realize that the location makes it difficult yes. so how can people who want to prevent this sort of diagnos uh, yeah. diagnosis or detect it earlier, how can they take action? Yeah, you know, this is really great. And I think probably one of the most important things about talking about pancreatic cancer is this. Um, and first of all, before I get there, I, I do want to talk very briefly about risk factors, long-term smoking, long-term diabetes, uh, people with chronic pancreatitis, and some people with certain genetic conditions do have a higher risk of getting pancreatitis. But let's go back to your question and say, well, how would I know if I was getting pancreatic cancer, you might say? Once again, it is tough. I have seen pancreatic cancer many times in my office, and it always presents late, meaning it's mm -hmm. it's it's late because of where it sits and things like that. The thing about it is pancreatic cancer typically causes vague symptoms. You might get a little abdominal pain, a little back pain. You might feel fatigued. You might lose a little weight. You might feel nauseous, maybe some yellowing of the skin. But remember, sometimes those symptoms can be written off as other things. So to answer your question, I know that was kind of long-winded but I wanted to go through what the symptoms could be this is what I tell people if something is different with you anything I don't care whether you think it's serious whether it's not let us worry about that if something is different with you and it doesn't go away doesn't stop and you don't know what's going on please come in and check with us that's one of the most important things to do especially in conditions where symptoms can be very vague and not easily pinpointable Doctor, this is an assumption, I think, on most of our parts, but he is an icon. He is. We can assume that he has been getting regular checkups with his doctor. We don't, you know, we, I'm sure he has health insurance. How is it possible for this to go undiagnosed right. until stage four? So, uh, and, and I'm speaking as a doctor. I mean, I, I, I had a case, you know, two months ago. Same thing. Hmm. And, and, and sometimes people don't even have symptoms. Let me be very clear. Not everyone has symptoms. Mm. It can be very quick. It can be sort of, you know, a, a growing underneath and we don't know. And again, some people only get like an abdominal pain symptom here and there. So you're asking why didn't we know, assuming he got regular checkups. It has to do with the organ and where it sits kind of mm -hmm. tucked back in there. We can't always feel it when we do abdominal exams. And honestly, the symptoms are vague. He may or may not have actually had any symptoms sure. that he was able to identify. So we can't exactly say why this is the case, but also important to remember to get those regular checkups. And again, if you're not sure about something, 
make sure that you see your doctor and ask about it. What is the likelihood of a patient being able to beat this at this stage? That's a good question. Again, it depends on a number of factors, right? As I mentioned before, his underlying sort of health status. Um, we know that it's stage four, but exactly stage four how, okay, mm -hmm. where it's gone and things like that, that matters. Um, and that will also determine the types of treatments that he is eligible for. Um, you know, once again, I think the most important thing when it comes to any cancer is the earliest diagnosis possible and treatment beginning immediately, which my guess is, um, you know, he's going to begin treatment immediately, and that's yeah. what we want. I'm, I have to say, um, I did have a chance to meet Representative Lewis uh, maybe a year ago or so, and I was just in awe. I mean, he literally is a civil rights Humility, and leader, yeah, and absolutely. just, right, he's just, he's a legend. Yeah. Um, and so, like I said, I, I applaud his, his willingness and, and, and desire to keep serving and so many people are with you, uh, Representative, yes. if you're listening. We are rooting uh, we, for you, we are, certainly. We are with you. Dr. John Cottle, great information as always. Thank, Thank you, Doctor. You. Thank you.